So speak, I beg to move the following resolution, signing my name. Whereas provided in section 631 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.0 on the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or the finance institution for the capital or current expenditure of government. And whereas it's further provided <coughs> under sec section 64 of the Act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. <coughs> and whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow an amount of US $2.343 million, the loan from the Caricom Development Fund to finance the implementation of the Community Tourism Program. And whereas the loan is payable in 12 years, commencing from the date of disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a grace period of two years, and whereas the loan is repayable in 40, 40 equal, approximately equal and consecutive quarterly installments on the 40th, 40th day of March, the 40th day of June, and the 40th of September, <coughs> and the 40th day of December of each year, over 10 years, after the expiration of two years, and from the date of disbursement of the loan. And whereas interest is payable at a rate of 3% per annum, be it resolved that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow an amount of US $2,248,000. $2,243,908 the loan from the Caribbean Development Fund to finance the implementation of the Community Tourism Program. Be it further resolved that the loan is repayable in 12 years, commencing from the date of disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a grace period of two years. The loan is repayable in 40 equal, approximately equal, and consecutive, consecutive quarterly installments on the 40th day of March, the 40th day of June, the 40th day of September, and the 40th day of December of each year, over 10 years, after the expiration of two years following the date of disbursement of the loan. Interest is payable at a rate of 3% per annum. Mr. Speaker, this loan, Mr. Speaker, that the Minister for Tourism will basically expand on, Mr. Speaker, is to borrow from the Caribbean Main Bank for the Community Tourism Program, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the Community Tourism Program is based on a philosophy, a philosophy that the benefits of tourism must accrue to as many people as possible. We believe that the only time that the people of Seleucia or the people of any country will truly understand and will truly be able to protect the industry, Mr. Speaker, is when they benefit from it in the pocketbooks. And that is the purpose of the Community Tourism Program, Mr. Speaker. It is seek to enhance free air, Mr. Speaker, the Denry Fish Fry, the Parliament representative Denry, we are very happy to hear that, Mr. Speaker. A seamless experience at Prale Bain Miku. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I sure you know where Prale is. Uh, the Mon lay by in Kashi, Mr. Speaker, and again, the Mon in Kashi, Mr. Speaker, you know, History has a very uh, uh, fond way, sometimes cruel, of history has a way of, of coming back, Mr. Speaker. You know, the Mon lay by, I remember <coughs> one day when I was Minister for Tourism, Mr. Speaker, tourists, tourists used to go and stand in the Mon area there <coughs> to oversee, to overlook the, the beautiful city of Castries. And when the tourists wanted to use the washroom, the taxi driver says to go over there. <coughs> and the tourists used to walk and say, go over there, go over there, go over there. And they're walking to find where there is, but there's no there, there is a bush. Because there were no tourist facilities in that area. So when you tell the tourists to go there, is a bush you're heading for. And they couldn't understand how there was the bush. <coughs> so we came, and he came to the cabinet and the minister, the prime minister was, the mayor of the service prime minister, and we spoke about building some, some toilet facilities up in that area for, for the tourists to use. And then we got that going, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> then we also get a, get, had a little space for the vendors. And the, our other government, Mr. Speaker, I don't know if I'm right, we put the, the, facility that that was there, Mr. Speaker. So we did it, our government did the, the toilets and the other government did. We did, we did everything. Huh? 
the view in Jack Yellow's done this week again. So, Mr. Speaker, that was again history. And right now, we are back to renovate it and make it, make it look nicer, Mr. Speaker. History has a way. And Mr. Speaker, all how they try to deny the history. The history will come back, Mr. Speaker. You can't keep a good man down. You can't. And these things are coming back, Mr. Speaker. So that's the money labor and cash trees. And the other one is the cathedral of the market conception and the first matter shrine in cash trees. Mr. Speaker, do you know that the cathedral is a historic building, Mr. Speaker, for lots of historical value? It's the same with the prison. The old prison was a historic. You know, Mr. Speaker, this, this misinformation and this lies and this inconvenient truths to quote someone that we in St. Lucia don't want to deal with Mr. Speaker. Do you know prisons are historical buildings? Prisons are part of the history of a country, the nature heritage, the heritage of a country, Mr. Speaker. There are countries in the world where the president's palace is in a prison, an old prison, Mr. Speaker. Prisons have a, a value. But when they when they come to tell you about 80 year old buildings, buildings have historical value. But it's to fool people, to mama guide people, to bluff people. Old buildings, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are institutions, archaeological and historical societies in the world that look to redo old buildings, Mr. Speaker, to make them a site, to make them a site. With, with the architecture, if you look in places like London, um, you see these buildings are built with our, with our, our labor, with our slave labor, <coughs> our slave labor, Mr. Speaker. These buildings are built and they are preserved. But he, but he comes and talks about old building, then I great in St. Lucians, old building, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> so that's what we're going to be doing in the cathedral, a matter shrine, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> and again, Mr. Speaker, I remember again. No, I wouldn't say that because it was this government minister and this prime minister who, when the church was re, redoing all its art and its culture and its paintings, Mr. Speaker, we made a contribution, didn't we? Yeah. All right. Right. We made a contribution, Mr. Speaker, to, yeah. <laughs> 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 to enhance... Isn't it just, again, history. You know, it's really, it's really a good time to be labor, you know. It's a, it's a good time to be labor. Really, it's a, time, it's a good time. It's a good time to be labor, Mr. Speaker. Because again, when we were enhancing the church, Mr. Speaker, it was this government that helped the church. We encouraged them, and we never. <coughs> And we never played politics. The member for Viewfort South was very clear that that there'd be absolutely no political, no political connotation. That the nation, Mr. Speaker. And right now, on the labor again, we are creating a master's shrine at the cathedral, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, very soon from now, we are going to be demolishing the old courthouse. Very soon from now. If you go there now, you see the air conditions and windows, some of them have been taken off. But Mr. Speaker, look at how we do our business, Mr. Speaker. I instructed NIPRO to write the National Trust to inform them that we are going to be demolishing that building and come and discuss with us if there is anything, any picture inside, any chair, any artifact that they would like, so we can't destroy it. That's how we do our business. We wrote them to preserve that patrimony, the patrimony that they say is your pocketbook. That is how, Mr. Speaker, that is the, 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 the way we run our business, Mr. Speaker. So oh, very soon, Mr. Speaker, you will see demolition happening in the old courthouse building. In the old courthouse building, Mr. Speaker, for the building of an architectural pleasing house of justice for the courts of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Very soon, Mr. Speaker, we don't talk. Only what they talk about is plans they had. 
plans. They had plans to build some hotels. They had plans to have 23 islands. They had plans to support the Caribbean. But we are showing it what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. So that, that, that cathedral will get added prominence. Because that cathedral is a historic site. Tourists already go there to view the, the architecture, to view what's in there, Mr. Speaker. So that money is going to be used for these purposes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the minister will, will expand, Mr. Speaker, as his honorable house to support this rather meaningful resolution. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.